Last year on Mondays, I recorded short videos on YouTube about books that have impacted me in different genres. And many of you asked if I could just put the audio of those videos up on the podcast. So we're going to. Here in 2021, on Monday morning, we will share with you a book that has impacted my life with the audio from our YouTube videos. If you want to go watch all of them or leave comments, you can go over to YouTube and search Organize 365, where you'll find our channel and be able to see all of the video reviews. Enjoy! Today, I'm reviewing the book Play It Forward, the story of Joan Barnes and Jim Barry, written by Michael Cofino. So I was searching my Audible, again, for female founders. You know, the last Monday of the month, I always want to introduce you to a new female founder. And I came across this story that came out in 2016. I listened to it in 2019 about the founding of Jimboree. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about how Jimboree started. I love Jimboree. I am the kind of mom that wanted all my kids to have matching outfits, and I had a boy and a girl, and so I would love to go to Gymboree and spend all of my husband's hard-earned money on these adorable matching outfits, and I would save it up for all of my kids' professional pictures were taken in Gymboree outfits, like the grandparents would buy Gymboree clothing. I loved it. My kids were, both went to Gymboree classes. We had a Gymboree birthday party. I loved everything about Gymboree, and I never even thought about, well, how did the company start? So I was super excited to dive into this into this book. So Joan shares her story. She started Gymboree 40 years ago with $3,000. Again, it's usually under $10,000. And it started as a class in the basement of a church. So the Gymboree play started first before the Gymboree clothing. And she wanted to create activity based early childhood development. So if you think 40 years ago, I mean, preschool was a thing, but it wasn't a big thing. And so this was right as preschool was becoming more popular. Jimbery was cutting edge on that as well. What I thought was so interesting about this story is she had so many different avenues for sales. They built the the classes first and then ended up with a clothing line and then they ended up franchising that. So you had the service-based and then developing a clothing line, and then developing franchises, and then she ended up with an IPO, and then she ended up with a board, and then she ended up not in charge of Gymboree anymore, which often happens when you get outside money or become a publicly traded company. She then ended up starting her next company, which was yoga-based. I loved hearing the story of Joan from the very first class that she taught in the basement of that church all the way until she started her yoga studio years later. Her personal trials and struggles through an eating disorder, her marriage, her children, what it was like to run the company, to have franchisees and have their needs and then have board needs and then have corporate needs and what the corporate home office did in relation to what happened with franchises, when they sold too many franchises or not enough franchises, how the whole clothing line got developed in general. Like it's totally different to have a clothing line than it is to have a play-based center. And that helps me think too about Organize 365. Like as we go forward, well, by now you will know, even though I'm recording this early, we've come out with a TV show pilot and I'm doing a national book tour. And we have a lot of ideas of how Organize 365 can expand beyond the physical products that we're selling and the online courses, which is what started us and a podcast. So how do you grow a brand and add in different market segments that maybe were not obvious when you first started the company? I highly recommend this. This is a great listen. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel and come back for another book review next Monday.